If you have diabetes, controlling insulin and glucagon is vital. While you may not be familiar with this concept, that's ultimately the goal of all the guidance and medication your doctor gives you. Insulin and glucagon naturally work to regulate blood sugar levels. They are like your body's personal sugar regulating team. When blood sugar levels get too high, insulin comes in and helps bring them down. And when they get too low, glucagon steps in to raise them back up. The problem occurs when one or both of these hormones become imbalanced. If there is too much insulin, blood sugar levels can drop too low, a condition called hypoglycemia, and if there is not enough insulin, blood sugar levels can rise too high, a condition called hyperglycemia. Both of these conditions can be extremely dangerous and even life-threatening. If blood sugar is consistently too high, it can lead to fatigue, nerve damage, blindness, and life-threatening conditions like diabetic ketoacidosis. Conversely, if blood sugar levels drop too low, it can cause dizziness, confusion, irritability, seizures, and even coma. That's why it's so important to maintain a healthy balance of insulin and glucagon in your body. So in today's video, we'll explore the nitty gritty of how insulin and glucagon regulate blood sugar levels, as well as practical steps you can take to maintain a healthy balance. But before we dive in, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you'll be the first one to hear when our new video comes up. We are Diabetics Talk, here to help you prevent, manage, and even potentially reverse diabetes. Watch till the end because we're giving away not one, not two, but three free gifts that can help you navigate that turbulent world of blood sugar. Now, let's get into it. First discovered in the 1920s, insulin is a hormone that helps regulate the levels of sugar in your blood. After eating, the digestive system breaks down carbohydrates into glucose, which enters the bloodstream. Taking anywhere between 30 minutes to 4 hours, depending on what type of food you're eating. In response, the pancreas secretes insulin into the blood, which signals the cells to take up glucose and store it for energy. This process lowers blood sugar levels and helps to maintain a healthy balance while providing a source of energy to go about your day. On the other hand, glucagon regulates blood sugar levels by signaling the liver to release stored sugar into the bloodstream when blood sugar levels get too low. The liver is like a magical cupboard that stores glucose to the power cells during periods of low blood sugar, like when you're sleeping or between meals. If you don't eat enough or if your diet is poor, your blood sugar can drop. But never fear, because the liver is here. It stockpiles glucose so that the blood sugar levels remain steady while you're fasting. To make it simple, insulin lowers blood sugar levels and glucagon increases them constantly working towards a happy balance. So glucagon is released during fasting periods, keeping the whole system functioning smoothly. Like an Olympic gymnast standing on one foot, constantly making micro adjustments to maintain balance. After eating, your body has a good supply of glucose from the food you've just eaten. So your pancreas stops releasing glucagon. But if you have diabetes, your body might not be able to effectively regulate insulin and glucagon levels. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease where the body's immune system attacks the cells that are responsible for insulin. While the most common issue for type 2 is that not enough insulin is produced or the cells become insulin resistant over time. But that's not the whole picture. Some diabetics don't release sufficient glucagon, making them a higher risk of chronically low blood sugar levels, especially for those who are prescribed medication that reduces blood sugar, such as sulfonylurea medication. On the other hand, with type 2 diabetes, it's also somewhat common for the pancreas to release too much glucagon, which can lead to chronically high blood sugar. So as you can see, it's complicated and there's not a one size fits all answer. For some people, glucagon continues to be released while eating. 
a time when your body is getting sufficient glucose from food, leading to extreme blood sugar spikes after a meal. Glucagon like peptide 1, GLP1, and glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, or GIP, are incretin hormones. GLP1 and GIP come from the gut and tell the beta cells in the pancreas to secrete more insulin. Likewise, they stop the alpha cells from releasing stored glucose and raising blood sugar levels. GLP-1 also reduces the rate at which food leaves the stomach, giving a feeling of being full and satisfied. When insulin or glucagon aren't functioning properly, those other hormones don't work correctly either. For this reason, type 1 diabetes are sometimes prescribed glucagon injections or nasal spray to avoid low blood sugar, also known as hypoglycemia. So what's a healthy range? Unfortunately, again, there's no exact number for everyone. We are, after all, unique beings with our own nuances. The world would be a boring place if we were all the same. Your ideal glucagon range differs depending on how long you've been fasting and your normal fasting blood sugar levels. But most research describes a normal glucagon range around about 50 to 100 picograms per milliliter. That's a hundred trillionths of a gram per gram of blood. Your healthcare provider will measure your ranges if they feel it's necessary, but it's not common. Normally, these tests are only needed if there's other endocrine problems involved. Okay, that's some background technical info. Right about now, you might be asking, are there natural ways to improve regulation of insulin and glucagon, and in the process, better regulate blood sugar levels? Yes, there is. We're about to discover four key things to focus on if you want greater control of your blood sugar levels. But first, it's time to reveal your three gifts. Discover an entire world of diabetes-fighting foods with our new book, 10 Incredible Foods That Reduce Blood Sugar. Plus, you'll discover the real reason why type 2 diabetes, obesity, and heart disease are increasing at an alarming rate. And find out what really works when it comes to preventing these illnesses by watching our free one-hour documentary, The Scary Truth About Sugar. And not only that, we are giving away a free recipe book, Amazing Alternatives to Rice, Pasta, and Bread, which contains over 50 delicious and easy to prepare recipes that the whole family will love. These gifts are free and waiting for you to grab them in the description box below. All right, now it's time to explore the four positive actions you can take today. At number four, diet is key. A healthy diet for someone with diabetes includes a balance of non-starchy vegetables, fruit in moderation, nuts and seeds, whole grains, and lean protein. It is also important to limit sugar, salt, saturated fats, and junk food. Low GI foods are the superhero of good health. Low GI foods such as avocado, nuts, lean meat, and seafood help to regulate blood sugar levels by slowing the absorption of carbohydrates into the bloodstream. This helps to keep glucagon and insulin levels in check and reduces the risk of blood sugar spikes after meals. Studies show that replacing high GI foods for lower GI alternatives led to a significant improvement in blood sugar control, reduced body weight, and a reduction in diabetes-related cardiovascular disease. Additionally, these foods tend to be high in protein and fiber, both of which help to slow the digestion of carbohydrates and promote a feeling of fullness. Fiber-rich foods can also help to cleanse the digestive tract and nourish gut bacteria, directly impacting the production of hormones, and helping to regulate insulin and glucagon levels. So make sure you're putting plenty of fiber-rich fruit, veggies, and whole grains on your plate. And remember, we've listed the most beneficial foods for you in our free ebook. At number three, 
stay hydrated. A main symptom of type 1 and type 2 diabetes is becoming easily dehydrated. Research shows that dehydration can lead to increased blood glucose levels, so experts stress the fact that drinking plenty of water is vital for diabetics and pre-diabetics. Water helps to flush excess sugar from your system, diluting the glucose that runs through your blood. In fact, a 2011 study looked into this and found that those who drank more water had better long-term regulation of insulin, glucagon, and overall blood sugar levels. Experts recommend drinking between 9 and 12 glasses per day, or around 3 liters. That's around the amount needed to keep the digestive system, liver, and pancreas happy, supporting your full body system that controls blood glucose. Now on to number two in our countdown. Are you getting enough Z's? Research shows that sleep has a big impact on blood glucose regulation. As we mentioned earlier, when you're sleeping, the body releases stored up sugar triggered by glucagon, which in turn reduces the stress hormone cortisol and helps to regulate blood sugar levels. Scientists looked at the sleep habits of over half a million people and found that those who slept more than seven hours per night had drastically improved blood sugar regulation. So sleep is one of the easiest effortless strategies that you can adopt to improve your long-term health outcomes. Although it may not seem like a big deal, night after night, year after year, the benefits of good sleep build up. Your body will thank you for it. And when you wake, you'll be refreshed and ready for our next insulin and glucagon regulating tip. That's right. At number one, move your body. A lack of movement drastically increases your chances for cardiometabolic disease. But on the other hand, exercise literally burns the excess glucose in your system, triggering the pancreas to release glucagon and in turn glucose that has been stored in the muscle cells and in the liver. The American Diabetes Association recommends 30 to 45 minutes of aerobic exercise per day. That's gentle exercise, like swimming, running, or biking, which involves extended time working large muscle groups under moderate intensity, as opposed to weightlifting or high-intensity workouts, also known as anaerobic exercise, which have long-term benefits but can be tricky for diabetics, as they can actually raise blood sugar levels in the short term. So it's best to talk to your doctor before starting a new anaerobic routine. Now, did you know that insulin is constantly working in every part of the body, including the brain? In fact, a 2014 study revealed new insights about how insulin works in the brain and how exercise has a direct impact. Previously, the brain was considered an insulin-independent organ. However, this research revealed that poor nutrition and a sedentary lifestyle led to insulin resistance in the brain, triggering to an inflammatory process which interfered with glucose metabolism and increased the risk for cognitive decline and dementia. They found that inflammation in the hypothalamus region of the brain, where insulin receptors are located, impaired signaling systems and caused glucose and energy disorders. So remember, exercise isn't just about looking and feeling great, but it has significant effects on whole body hormone health in the brain and all the vital organs. And if you're wondering when should you exercise, researchers found that exercise after eating is particularly effective for improving control of blood sugar levels, both in the short term as well as long term fasting blood glucose balance. Post meal exercise can be as simple as a walk around the block. In fact, scientists found that type 2 diabetics who took simple 10-minute post-meal walks averaged glucose levels that were 12% lower than people who walked at other times of the day. So there you have it, a full tour of how insulin and glucagon regulate blood sugar levels and the steps you can take to gain greater control of these hormones through eating a diet rich in vegetables, whole grains, lean protein and fiber, staying hydrated, getting sufficient sleep, and moving your body. 
What challenges do you face when it comes to balancing blood sugar? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll do our best to cover them in a future video or point you in the right direction. And before you leave, make sure to claim your free gifts by clicking the link in the description below. We want to keep making informative, research-based videos for you, so if you've gained value from this video and would like more of it, you can send us a super thanks by clicking the thanks button at the bottom of the video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button for more diabetics talk. Thanks for watching. We hope you're having a diabetes fighting day.